Welcome, yo, bro nation, to your retro rewind review here on the Yo Bro Nation YouTube channel. I am Zach with the Yo Bro Nation YouTube channel. I am the host. And I want to welcome everyone back to the channel. Uh, today, today we're doing a, a pay-per-view that people voted on, a pay-per-view that I, did, I enjoyed. For the most part, I enjoyed this. ECW Living Dangerous Living Dangerously 1998. Uh, what do you say? ECW in the 90s, and it just, it was... What a crazy, crazy show uh, these people would always put on uh, in this, this company. Crazy shows. In, insane, no doubt, insane, uh, just everything, just uh, how, I don't even know how to tell you, it, it was just always insane, but welcome back to the channel, uh, this is episode 5, yeah, episode 5 of the Retro Rewind Reviews, uh, I enjoy doing these. Getting to go back down memory lane, getting to rewatch old pay-per-views, especially when now I'm not actually having to choose them. I, I, I just select a few, let you guys pick them yourselves, and then I just come on here and I, I tell you guys exactly what was going on. So, oh, Retro Rewind, Living Dangerously 1998. What a show. Um, this show had, I guess, a few changes. Some things were supposed to be uh, going on, but it changed. Something to do with um, the cable providers not wanting certain things. Uh, and ECW, being them, did basically what they wanted to do. Uh, but this was only their fourth, only their fourth event that they ever did. Um, well, their fourth actual pay per view. They did big shows before. But you know, this was their uh, their their fourth pay per view they'd ever done. I didn't know much going into this show. Uh, I had never watched it before. I, I I mean, I go back and I watch ECW. I watch the old TNN shows and and the stuff that they had had on there before this. But I never actually got to sit and, and really like watch and see what they had uh, going on. Uh, I'm gonna just make sure I meet my phone, you guys. So, but this was a good show. I enjoyed this show very, very much. Uh, do I enjoy, enjoy it as much as, say, probably the old Raws? I don't know. I, I think I like the old Raws a little bit better. They're easier to digest. These, okay, I'm telling you, ECW, those shows were always all over the place. Every one of them I've ever watched, whether it was in the, the mid-90s, to the late 90s, to the year 2000. It was just like, you could say they were unpredictable, but they would always just kind of throw stuff at you, and you never really knew what was going on. It, it was always, well, maybe they're doing this, or maybe they're doing that. Oh, this guy's not competing, and it's supposed to be this. They, they, they were constantly changing. I don't know if it was budget restraints, or contract disputes, or just... Just how they wanted to book it, I I have no clue. And there's uh there's quite a few instances in this particular show where they just do things and they're just like you like it or you won't. Now, granted, the crowds back then they they ate this shit up. They ate this shit up big time. So it, it wasn't really a big issue back then. People, the wrestling fans back then compared to now were much more rabid and loved every little detail that they had uh, and loved every little thing that they would do regarding um, what they were giving you for a product. Before I uh, actually get into the actual show, I want to go ahead and uh, talk to you guys how you can help support the channel. Of course, there's several ways that you can do it. The first one... Nope, that's not what I wanted. The first one being the Yobro Nation... Uh, Patreon page. You can guys go to patreon.com forward slash YoBroNation. Six tiers to choose from. You can get early access to some of our videos. Retro Rewind, Best of the Best Countdown. Uh, that might be a little bit before I get to do that with all the other content I'm taking care of now. Behind the scenes vlogs, I've decided I'm going to do those once a month. 
You get Ask Us Anything Q&As. You guys get exclusive access to the AEW reviews starting with Double or Nothing. Uh, you guys will get early access to that for sure, and then maybe it'll just be exclusive. Monday Morning Creative, that will be a weekly thing every Monday. It's kind of like Monday Morning Quarterback, but about wrestling. Post-show videos, that will be this Sunday, uh, tomorrow, I will be doing a post-show video uh, after the Elimination Chamber. Not sure what I'll be doing yet, but it, I'm sure it will be something fun that I'm going to be doing. Uh, you guys get to vote. Vote on the Retro Rewinds. You guys, well, you guys did that today. Now, if you're a Patreon member, $10 and up in that tier, you get free merchandise for your birthday. You just PM me on Twitter or you can DM me uh, in Facebook, however you want to. Let me know when it's your birthday. $10 and up Patreons. Get a t-shirt. Get whatever it is that you want. You guys get that for being a Patreon member. Also, you can be a producer or co-executive producer of Patreon. You get to help us decide what's going off the channel. You guys get you know, shout-outs every show. You guys will be part of the actual process of the channel. That is all the things you guys can do with Patreon. Uh, and look, more stuff will be added as time goes on, as you know, the count goes up. But it, it's it's not something you have to do. There are other options. Now, if, if you're saying, Zach, okay, Patreon... It's, it's not for me. Well, I have another option for you. tpublic.com forward slash Yoro Nation 1. You guys can go to tpublic. We got the Kissing Bandit t-shirt. We got the Recess Never Gets Old t-shirt. Charlotte Reigns t-shirt. That thing, that's an ugly woman. Uh, Yobro Nation, the new design. We got the classic design. We got the more modern design. And we got the Throwback Yobro Gaming and Reviews t-shirt. I love that t-shirt. I, I want that t-shirt. I want to wear that t-shirt. I, I, I got it on the way. So you guys got all that stuff you guys can watch. All of that right there in TeePublic. And look, if, if that's something else that you guys aren't um, – well, it's something that you guys aren't really wanting to do. I get that. I'm not asking you guys to give money. There's something else you guys can do. Super simple. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you can get updates on all our stuff. Go to Twitter where I will post stuff. You guys can see what's going on. Get kind of my thoughts you know, early on different events, Raw, SmackDown, in case you know, reviews don't go up. You guys can get my thoughts and opinions there. Uh, also, like, share these videos. Get you know, Let people know, hey, there's this YouTube channel. He's talking about wrestling. He's an okay dude. He seems kind of entertaining. Uh, go ahead and watch him. I can be silly. I do best when I, I have the right environment. But I'm telling you what, some of these shows can really tear you know wear a person down. So you know it, it it can be tough at times. It really really can. But all that stuff, it's here. It's on the channel. You guys can go and uh, you guys can watch that stuff. Just like like share subscribe all that stuff. I'm stumbling over words. It's early. It's early in the morning. All right. So. Let's go ahead and let's get into this event. Living Dangerously 1998 took place March 1st, 1998, Asbury, New Jersey, at their convention hall. The show opens up with, you see Taz, it's late at night, he's pulling up, he walks into the building, it's empty, and he just says, I'm ready. You get Joey Styles in the middle of the ring, as you do for most of these shows, where he's welcoming everyone to the show, to ECW, Living Dangerously. He says, for the next three hours, we'll all be living dangerously and explain that this is only their fourth pay-per-view event. They get the opening promo. Uh, their promos were so cheaply done. I, I probably do better building my videos up than they did back then. Um, no big deal, though. The opening contest is Tracy Smothers and Little Guido of the FBI, along with Tommy Rich. Uh, I've met Tracy Smothers, actually. I met him a couple years ago at a wrestling event in Missouri. Uh, he's a really good dude, legend of the business. Um, you know, dude's been everywhere, done everything, been a champion all over the place. Uh, I, I really think uh, Tracy's mother is a really awesome dude. Uh, they take on the team of Chris Chetty and Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn, no beard, much younger. Chris Chetty, he he was only uh, a year in, so he was still kind of a green rookie. Um, this match was it was a good tag team match, solid tag team action with the FBI playing up their heel parts, doing the heel work, working over the baby face, 
you get that classic tag team, that old school tag team uh, type match. Loved that sort of stuff. I loved this stuff. Uh, old school tag team wrestling. It's the best. You get a little Guido at the beginning of the match. You know, he's in an arm wrench with Chetty. Uh, and he keeps doing the, come on, Paisan. Come on, Paisan. You know, little Guido, a lot of you probably remember him as Nunzio from WWE. Dude is so underrated. He was such a fantastic wrestler. But he never got his just due. You know, I wish he would have just stayed in ECW. Sadly, of course, we all know it wouldn't have worked out anyways. Um, Chetty and Lynn are starting to pick up the pace and building momentum. FBI, they're making a comeback. Like I said, great teamwork with uh, Guido and uh, Smothers. I, my brain is not working. Um, but, you know, they, they, they cut off the ring. They got Chetty. They're working him over. Chetty, you know, he keeps fighting, though. He ends up making the hot tag to Jerry Lynn. He cleans house. Him and Chetty start to build momentum. Uh, Jerry Lynn float, you know, flips through, grabs the legs, and he's holding him down. Gets the three count. Uh, Jetty or Chetty, Jetty. That's what I'll call him. Jerry Lynn, Chris Chetty. They're Jetty. Jetty wins with the pin. Uh, afterwards, Tracy Smothers and Tommy Rich get into it. Smothers knocks Rich on his ass. And Nunzio tries to play peacekeeper. peacekeeper. Uh, Tommy Rich goes to the back. This this did happen for a while. They they continued to have issues for a little bit, but it turned out to I think kind of be a work if I remember correctly. Okay, so uh, this match, good match. Like I said, it was a good tag team match. These guys uh, worked their tails off. I enjoyed what I saw. Um, it, it was a good opening contest. You know, I've seen these pay-per-views where this is supposed to happen, and then these guys come out, and then these guys come out, and it leads to this. It, it's been crazy. Uh, this was a mild thing. Uh, they did a promo package from Mas Masada Tanaka uh, taking on Wing Kanamira. Kanamira? I can't. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, they were supposed to have a match. Uh, Doug Furness with Mr. Wright comes out. They walk to the ring. Mr. Wright, this guy, right? That's what I wrote in the notes, this guy. Uh, claims to be friends with Vinnie Mac, or for those of us who don't know, that's Vincent K. McMahon Jr. He was not a junior, just saying. Uh, and says that he's going to be the replacement for Conamera. Con 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 God, I suck at his name. Thank God I ain't got to do this through a whole match. Says that he's going to be a replacement, that he's got the guy uh, who can take care of Masato. You know, this guy is just whatever. So Masato Tanaka versus Doug Furness. Doug Furness, who is a good wrestler. Uh, but This was during the whole talent exchange that they were doing with ECW. The World Wrestling Federation was working with. You had Rob Van Dam, who would show up on Raw. Jerry Lawler would come over. He was probably the biggest name that they sent over. And then occasionally they'd send you know, you know, know, their uh, mid-card, lower mid-card talent to their promotion and kind of let them work things. And this, isn't, this is the first of a few that will be on this show. So, of course, Tanaka is a member of Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. He's representing them, and Furnace representing the World Wrestling Federation. Um, Furnace used martial art kicks. You know, he's kicking Masato Tanaka, kind of trying to show him up. You know, Tanaka at first was beating him up. Uh, the pace slowed down. Tanaka, he was in full control. This was a very, you know, kind of a back and forth battle. Like I said, slow pace, though. Uh, Tanaka was in control. More back and forth. Neither one could really get the advantage. Uh, these guys were taking it to the outside. You know, very good wrestling match with these guys. Furnace uh, kept trying to you know finish the match. He's hitting these moves. Um, Mr. Wright, though, every time Furnace would get on, you know, get him to the pin, get up there. No, no, keep beating him up, embarrass him. I, I don't know. I don't know what was the background why he had an issue with Masato Tanaka. I, I have no clue. But he kept doing it. Finally, Tanaka got the advantage. Hit Furnace with the roaring elbow. One, two, three. Uh, decent match. Not great. Um, after the match, Mr. Wright kept talking to Furnace, uh, trash-talking him. I says, you know what? I'm going to go talk to JR. I'm going to talk to Bruce Pritchard. And I'm going to talk to Mr. McMahon. And I promise you, you'll never work Monday Night Raw again. Furnace clotheslined the shit out of him. Told him, go tell Vince for me. Go fuck yourself. Or kiss my ass. He said, kiss my ass. 
put on the ECW shirt and walked around. Oh, welcome, Furnace, to ECW. I, I think he did wrestle for a while under them, but he he wasn't a big star really that much in WWE. Let's just let's be real, okay? Not to say that Doug Furnace wasn't a good wrestler. He was. So we sh you see Joey Styles in his little booth um, talking about how they can't show the Sabu versus Sandman match. That it's too graphic and too violent for the pay-per-view providers to see. You do see the match, though, still later on. Uh, goes to go over the rest of the card. Nicole Bass and Jason, who are friends and uh, colleagues with one Just Incredible Basically, bully him into playing this tape from earlier where they show Tommy Dreamer showing up to the building. Okay. Uh, I know Tommy Dreamer was in a feud. Uh, okay. Match of the night. Match of the night is next. Two Cold Stokes, two Cold Scorpio, or at this time when he was, he's still with the World Wrestling Federation as Flash Funk, takes on Rob Van Dam with Bill Alfonso. This was match of the night. Easily. Best match on this card. Of course, at this time, like I said, Rob Van Dam was going on Raw. He got the moniker Mr. Monday Night. He was a cocky prick. Oh, look at me. I'm better than everyone else in ECW. I'm going to Monday Night Raw and having matches. I remember one of those matches was Jeff Hardy. Uh, so, yeah, he was a little... Um, look at me. I'm Rob Van Dam. Mr. Monday Night. Smoking weed every day. They started, you know, lots of holds, counters... Uh, get in the crowd, you know, they exchange moves, pose, crowd, you know, yay! The crowd, the ECW crowds were the best crowds ever, you know, and if you messed up, they told you. If you did great, they rewarded you with cheers. That's how they were. More of the feeling out process, um, no one was really getting the advantage. Scorpio finally gave Van Dam a kick to the face. Van Dam rolls out of the ring. This is when the match starts to pick up. Scorpio, you know, starts throwing him from this side of the barricade, steel mesh to that side, dumping him on it, um, you know, all over the steel rails. Rob Van Dam starts making a comeback, starts doing the same thing to him, using the rails, chair shots. Van Dam using his high, you know, his real high. I mean, Van Dam and his move set was some of the best. Right, it, it was it was something to watch, especially at that point in time. A very high impact, high flying. Uh, Scorpio though gets back into the advantage, starts working over RVD some more. This real nasty pair bomb, like Van Dam high and tight on his neck and his shoulders. Um, Scorpio starts doing his own moves. He's doing like moon salts and 450 splashes, all this stuff. RVD though he ain't gonna quit. Scorpio's keeping up the pressure. Van Dam starts to fight back, goes for the frog splash. Scorpio gets his knees up. Scorpio, though, right back. You know, these guys start going some more back and forth. Fall onto the ramp. The crowd is just, like, the crowd is super into this match. RVD gets him back in the ring. Low blow Scorpio. The ref gets a splash as uh, Van Dam pulls him into the, into the way. Van Dam goes for a 450 splash, misses. Scorpio goes for his 450 splash, hits it. Goes for the cover. Sabu comes in, hits the Arabian, um, not the leg drop, the Arabian, um, son of a bitch. I can't remember the name of it. I'm a dumbass. Where are we at? Arabian face buster. Whatever. Hits the leg drop with the chair, right on to two, scorps, two cold Scorpio. Pulls him over for the cover. Only a two count. Uh, RVD and him keep fighting. Sandman comes in. He chases Sabu off. RVD does a victory roll, uses his legs to scissor him. One, two, three. After the match, RVD, you know, says, hey, this was a great experience for both of us. Obviously greater for me. Says, but hey, you know, gave me a really good match, so I guess I can give you this. I'll give you the pleasure of shaking my hand. So Scorpio goes to reach in and shake. Van Dam, oh, too cool for you. Scorpio says, look, obviously I'm the better man, but I I will shake your hand even though you won't shake mine. Or I'll shake your hand even if you don't shake mine. And it's like, wait, what? What is he? I, I'm not sure. So they shake hands. I was just like, okay, I'll shake your hand, but you got to say I was the better man tonight. He's like, yeah, you were the better man tonight. So they shake hands. He's you're raising Van Dan's arm and then clotheslines him. Starts to attack him. Sabu shows back up for the save. They're attacking Scorpio. They're getting him set up. They put him onto the table. Sandman comes back out to make the save for him. Uh, they're fighting. 
He attempts a hurricanrana off the top rope, hurts his ribs, uh, and Sandman only go, or sorry, Sabu only goes through the edge of the table. Looked bad. It did. It looked bad. But then Sandman and Two Cold, you know, Two Cold Scorpio, they're they're celebrating afterwards. Scorpio's like, look, I've been all over the world, you know, doing all these stuff. The best place is to come here and kick butt in ECW. They're dancing and drinking beer. I guess, whatever. You know, that was what they wanted to do. It was nice for them. They enjoyed it. Good for them. Then there was a promo package. A promo package to highlight the uh, dysfunctions between the tag team champions of Chris Candido and Lance Storm. Next match was a three-way dance, I guess an elimination match, uh, between Spike Dudley and New Jack. The Dudley boys, who had Sign Guy Dudley, Big Dick Dudley, and Joel uh, Gertner with them, and then Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney. This match, <sighs> um, no, not not a grunt as in it was a bad match. No, 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 that does not at all what I'm saying. This match, holy God, it was just it was everywhere, everywhere. Um, Joel Gertner, of course, introduces all the Dudleys only like he can, you know, the stud muffin, blah, 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 blah. Didn't know, I, I love Joel Gertner, but he, he would never have gotten to WWE doing what he did. Just never. But hey, Joel Gertner, he did stick around in wrestling, did do stuff afterwards. Uh, Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney come to the ring. They jet in. They just start fighting before the the other team even shows up. These guys fight for a good five minutes before New Jack and Spike even get into the ring. They're fighting everywhere. Uh, Big Dick Dudley comes in, choke slams Axel Rotten. Then out comes New Jack and Spike Dudley. They beat down the Dudleys. New Jack, you know, vicious shots with the chairs and 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 this and that. You know, New Jack just doing what New Jack does. He's known for being bad. All six men are brawling around. Inside the ring, outside the ring, Axel Rotten's bleeding. Uh, all the men end up bleeding at some point in this match, or most of them start bleeding in this match. Uh, what I noticed after New Jack and Spike came out, that fucking music, that dubbed theme, which I hate the dubbed themes that they do on these shows, God, just spend a few hundred bucks and get the rights for a year or something. Like, come on, get the rights for the original theme music. That's some of what made ECW special, was their theme songs. I mean, fuck, I I'll watch WCW on there, and Ric Flair will have his actual theme. Then I'll watch him on, you know, a WWE program, and they'll have the, 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 the dubbed theme that they have from him in the early 90s. That's just like, why not? I mean, he comes out to that theme. Why don't he have it on the network? Stuff like that. Play like okay, Tommy Dreamer coming out to Enter Sandman on our Enter Sandman with him. Tommy Dreamer coming out to what he came out to. Rob Van Dam coming out, you know, to walk. That stuff made the shows awesome. No, we get these stupid dub themes. And then this one played, I swear, for 15 minutes from the moment they came to the match ended. It just kept playing. It's like, did the music never stop? Or were they trying to cover up some chance? What were they doing? Why? It, it it took me out of the match. And I just, oh my god, I was so frustrated listening to it. It was like, annoying. Just annoying. That's my rant. That's my rant about the dub themes. And the fact that this song just kept playing. <sighs> I mean, I'm sure probably the music that New Jack had was bad. It was probably something gangster gangster. And they just didn't want that. Some exceptions, I'm sure. But yeah, the music kept playing, just got annoying. This match became so chaotic. Blood, violence, the match, they made their way into the crowd, we went over to the balcony. Both Dudleys were, you know, set up on the table. Spike and New Jack, they're up on this balcony, they both jump off. New Jack damn near missed him. He hit and just went flying forward. I'm surprised the dude didn't break his damn neck. Um, the match finally got back to the ring with Mahoney and Axel Rotten taking them to the ring more stuff spike dudley uh he's fighting with mahoney mahoney sets up the table spike counters ends up hitting a tornado ddt put mahoney through the table head first mahoney and rotten are getting get eliminated after devon and bubba ray hit the 3d 
double chair, sh uh, double guitar shots by both uh, ah, by New Jack and Spike Dudley on the Dudley Boys. Get an acid drop on Devon, then the leg drop off the top rope by New Jack with the chair. They go for the cover. One, two, three. Spike Dudley and New Jack win and uh, win this match. The match was it was all over the place. It was just and the music. The music really dampered really dampered me with that crap. It it, it took it down for me, just it constantly playing. It was it, it, it was just bad. It it really bugged me. Afterwards, Joey Styles apologizes for the for the actions of Justin Credible. Um, then they go ahead and they show the uh, the promo package of Just Incredible and everything that he did. This setting up for the match with him and Tommy Dreamer, who who been having issues for a long time up to this point. You know, Tommy Dreamer, um, you know, his grandfather who passed away, Just Incredible insulting him, then basically trying to uh, pick up, you know, Beulah McKellicuddy, McGillicuddy. Uh, she's got a weird name. So that whole thing with her, is she going to be with Justin? Is she not with Justin? They get the new uh, commentary member, the lady who's going to be doing interviews, Jenna, J Jenna Jameson. Yes, the same Jenna Jameson who is a porn star. Yeah, that's what we got. She says her first interview is going to start now. She says, hit it! And out jump comes Just Incredible with... Jason and Nicole Bassey says, Usually, Jenna, I'd give you the time of the day. But when you got Beulah McGillicuddy on your jock, well, who needs you? And she's standing there, and then keeps talking. Horrible acting. Horrible, 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 horrible. Keeps talking. She says, Fine, I only did this because they asked me to. I'm going to interview who I wanted to interview. And she's like, Hit it! Again. Walks to the entrance. Out comes Tommy Dreamer. He makes out with her. And then goes to the ring. She literally did nothing. Shock factor, I guess. That I, I suppose that's what it was. It was just shock factor. As far as the match goes, Tommy Dreamer versus Just Incredible. This wasn't a very long match. Not, a, not the greatest match these two would ever have either. These guys had much better matches. Uh, Dreamer takes everyone out. Um... You know, they fight to the outside, you know, slingshot on the ramp through a chair. Dreamer's punishing Credible, but Credible makes his comeback. A drop toll hold on to the back of the chair. Dreamer goes through it. It looked like a pretty rough shot. Uh, back and forth. Credible, you know, hits his corkscrew pile driver. Here comes out Beulah. Like, these guys are punishing each other. They're beating up each other quite a bunch. Uh, quite a bunch. <sighs> Maybe I need speech therapy. Uh, who knows? Here comes out Beulah. She uh, winks at Just Incredible. He's doing his pose with her next to him. She drops down low blow. In comes Jason. She DDTs him. Nicole Bass comes in, grabs her, squeezing the shit out of her. Out comes Mikey Whipwreck, who, who, whose knee was damaged by Just Incredible. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe the knee injury was legit. I, I'm not really sure. He comes in, so Nicole Bass drops her. Nicole Bass's whole blouse just comes down. Nipple and everything. Of course they blurt it out. Of course they blurt it out. Nipple and all, and the crowd's like, oh! And she's like, uh, <clears throat> So she gets taken out by Mikey Whipwreck with the whippersnapper. Just incredible while that's happening. Grabs the crutch right into the knee of Mikey Whipwreck. So he's posing. Dreamer shots to Just Incredible. Irish whips him into the corner. He flips, almost goes out of the ring, comes back. Dreamer hits the DDT. One, two, three. Tommy Dreamer wins this match. Of course, this still was not the end of these dudes' feud. This would continue for a while longer. Promo package detailing the build to Taz versus Bam Bam Bigelow. Uh, of course, these two. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, I'm having problems with the triple threat. They're kicking me out. Will you help me, Taz? And Taz like, I do what I want when I want. But Taz agrees, I'll help you. They have the match. They beat Triple Threat. Uh, well, two-thirds of what was Triple Threat. Uh, Taz, you know, showing off, I'll be your savior is what Taz told him. Turns out it was all a ruse. Bam Bam Bigelow was still a part of the Triple Threat. It was all just a plan to get to Taz, which 
excuse me, led to this show in Asbury Park, the home of Bam Bam Bigelow. Holy crap, I got like the hiccups. Yes, the home of one Bam Bam Bigelow. So the crowd was firmly behind him. This match, short but sweet. Um, Bigelow, of course, with the advantage. And these guys have a stare down. Taz starts hot. Clotheslining Bam Bam Bigelow out of the ring. They're fighting on the outside. Bigelow, the much bigger man, Taz, not a big guy, uh, uses his size to his advantage. Uh, they're fighting around. Taz and him get onto the ramp. This spot, holy shit, I thought Taz was going to break his freaking neck. Taz T-bone suplexes. Now, mind you, the apron, the rampway um, is up. It's level with the ring, so the crowd is further down, a good three, four, maybe even five feet down. Um, Taz is up there, gets him in a T-bone, suplexes him to the crowd through the chairs, but there's a good two feet between the ramp and the rail, and Taz goes right on it, neck and head first. I thought the dude broke his freaking neck. Uh, it was it was a very scary bump. But Taz was okay. These guys kept fighting. Uh, Bigelow would get the table. It was already broken. Um, Taz, uh, he tried to put Taz through. Taz would counter. Drop Bigelow onto the table. Again, Taz hurt his neck. Um, the crowd, they were super into this. They were, they, you know, they were starting to get into Taz, but, you know... They, not quite, because, you know, they still wanted Bam Bam Bigelow to win. He's the hometown guy. Taz gets fired up. Is they're fighting, you know, Bigelow there on the outside. He's punching him. Bigelow keeps punching him. Taz is like, come on. Keep keep hitting me. So they keep fighting. They get back in the ring. Bigelow's got the advantage. Goes for the greens from Asbury Park. Taz uh, counters that. Gets him to the Taz mission. That's his sleeper hold with the arm hooked up. Um... There, you know, he's on it. Bigelow trying to fight out of it. He runs backwards, falls into the far corner near the ramp. They go through the damn mat, through the freaking mat. It looked, it looked nuts. And now the bright lights from outside just messing up my lighting. Great, great stuff. Look, I'm gonna have issues again. Awesome. Um, Bigelow, he's out there. He he crawls out, drags Taz out with his arm. Covers him one, two, three. Bam Bam Bigelow is your new ECW television champion. Afterwards, Paul Heyman, he's he's you know the show in the ring and what happened there, and he's like, buy me some time, buy me some time. Um, and it's a little bit of confusion, and he's like, look, go ahead and play the same man Sabu match. He's like, we can't, it's not allowed. He's like, play the match that you're fine, you're the boss, but if we get kicked off, this is on you. So they showed the match, Sabu versus the Sandman and the Dueling Canes match. These two having an issue, of course. You saw early in the night, they were interacting with the two cold Scorpio RVD match. Uh, both men were getting, you know, beating each other with the cane. RVD was actually dressed like Sabu, so Sabu comes in, attacks Sandman from behind. Uh, they beat him up. RVD goes back to the back. Sabu with the advantage. Sabu, uh, you know, while they're fighting, sets up the table on the steel barricade. On the outside, puts Sandman through it, jumping off, uh, jumping off, and doing his little Arabian leg drop. Um, you know, only a two count. Hits an Arabian face buster, only a two count. Uh, they continue to battle around the ringside, outside, inside. The ref takes a bump because the they set up a table against the ropes. The ref's grabbing it, I don't know, holding it to steady it. Sabu Irish whipped into it, uh, re reverses Sandman, hits it. The ref goes down. Out comes the referee who's in their pocket. Here comes RVD because the cha the table was set up by Sandman. RVD comes flying over, lands on top, almost goes off the ramp, manages to grab to the apron. He's okay. They end up putting uh, Sandman through the table with the double leg drop um, after he hits the frog splash on Sandman for a two count. You know, for the you know the frog splash with the chair. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then they put double leg drop through the table on the ramp, drag Sandman back to the ring. One, two, three. Sandman uh, loses this match, and they cut back to Joey Styles. That was the match. Th this was the uh, this was the oh too violent, too graphic to be shown on television. Oh my God, what are we doing? That that is what they basically uh, said to us that we couldn't um, watch.
Okay, I'm in the right spot. Just making sure. Um, that that match wasn't all that violent. It wasn't. I was expecting like real big bloodbath and just. But no, it, it wasn't. The graphic nature of that was not that bad. I've seen way worse with ECW. I've seen worse with worse with WWE. Uh, so Joey Styles he goes off on Paulie, you know, talking about I'm not dealing with the censors. You can handle the phone calls. Screw the office job. If we get kicked off pay per view, I'm done. Of course they didn't. They kept their deal. In fact, they got more pay per views the next year than what they had this year. Uh, and he also, during that rant, announced that um, at Wrestlepalooza in May 3rd, they would have another pay-per-view. Lance Storm and his mystery partner versus Chris Candido and Shane Douglas. Of course, Candido and Storm are having their, their issues. They're the world tag team champions. Shane Douglas is the world heavyweight champion. Every pay-per-view that I've watched that is ECW, I've yet to see Shane Douglas defend his fucking title. Does he ever? Did he ever defend his championship on these shows? I'm starting to think not. I'm starting to think not. Uh, of course, the ring's still broken from the match before. They were unable to fix it. Um, Joey Styles mentioned that in his little rant. Um, so, Candido cuts a promo about, you know, the only three people in my life who have ever beat me up is my granddad, God rest his soul, Bam Bam Bigelow, who's back with the triple threat, so that's not going to happen. He says, and my wonderful, beautiful fiancé who's at home. So he says, who you got? This looks like fun for me. So he comes out. Lance Storm points. Here comes Sonny. She says, it's not your granddaddy. It, and, and Sonny is still working with WWE at this time. She's actually a few weeks away from being the manager of the Legion of Doom 2000. Yes. Like I said, lots of crossovers in this show. Uh, since it's not Bam Bam Glow, it's me, honey, and you know you like it. She says, so I'm the mystery partner. She's in her wrestling gear. Uh, Storm goes diving over the ropes, double clothesline, taking both um, both men down. Uh, he fights with them, some super kicks, you know, some moves. Candido, Candido and him are fighting. He tags in Sunny. She comes in. Francine comes in, cuts her off. Uh, Sunny, you know... She gets out of the way. Sonny's got, I guess it's supposed to be a baking sheet. Um, franchise pulls Candido away from Storm. They're both standing there. She's like, and she, in the worst fashion. Oh my God, Sonny should have never been in the ring. In the worst fashion, hits James Storm. So they got him in a, um, they put him in a hold. Uh, I forgot what they did. Um. Oh, yeah, a um, Steiner recliner or rear, you know, the yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, my, my brain's not working. I can't even think of the fucking name of the move. Um, and they're, you know, they're trashing him. Oh, I thought you had a mystery partner. Who's your mystery partner? Who, what do you have for me? What do I get? And Lance Storm says, you get head. And this crowd exploded. Oh, my God, that light is so bright. Goodness gracious, I'm glad it's sunny outside, but holy crap, it's so bright. Oh, golly. I'm like white and pale. I'm covering that up. I can't do this. Um, now, the, the crowd was supposed to have uh, Al Snow in a match anyway. So here comes Al Snow. Camera shots were really confusing, like the upside down camera shots. I guess just I, I don't know what they were trying to show. He comes in. They claim house. They brawl for a while. Francine, you know, he goes after her to get head back. Um, Douglas and him start fighting back and forth. Douglas, he ends up falling through the hole. So I'm sure that it was intentional if that was left up. Because they just had it covered with yellow tape. Uh, even Sonny almost fell into it. She went foot first. Uh, Douglas falls through it. Gets back out. Snow hits him with the snow plow. One, two, three. Al Snow and Lance Storm win. This was a ridiculous main event. This was a fucking horrible main event. Uh, one, you have the, the champion not defending his championship. That's redundant. Um, but it wasn't good. Yes, Al Snow coming out, getting the ovation, which was dubbed with a fake theme. Uh, so you didn't really get to hear the actual crowd. You could see him. Woo! Gosh, dang, my microphone. Just every little time I touch it. 
goodness gracious. But, you know, they're doing the, the head chants with all these heads, and they fill the ring with the heads after the match is over. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. That was definitely not a, a main event that I would want to see. But, hey, this was ECW in the 90s. They did a lot of things that people were – they were okay with. So, gosh, I look so pale. Uh I'm almost white in this picture. Like, I'm almost like a pure white, and it's not even that bright in here. <laughs> I'm going to figure out a way to cover that later. But, yeah, that, that was what the match was. That was your main event. This was your, your show. This was ECW, Living Dangerously, 1998. Your guys' vote. So, I want to thank everyone, though, who did, uh, who did uh, choose and who did help uh, vote. So, thank you, everyone for your your votes um again thank you guys for coming into the channel watching this video go to our twitter yo bro gaming one you guys can follow us there yo bro nation on patreon facebook yo bro nation t public yo bro nation one yo bro gaming and reviews the stream lives you guys can go there and de de donate discord come in join the discord yo bro nation um, all that stuff down in the description i also have videos uh, other channels you guys can go and you guys can see Guys, go check out the playlist. Watch the other ones. A many water videos coming this weekend. It's a big weekend. It is Elimination Chamber weekend. My 2K19 game. It's on the channel. Wow. This right. This is just God. This is bad. I hate the lighting, but what can I do? I'll have to fix it after this. So thank you guys so very much for joining me here on the channel. I'm Zach. I will see you guys all uh, tomorrow for Elimination Chamber. Don't forget, best of the best countdown WrestleManias number number eight and number seven are coming up tomorrow. You guys can look forward to those. Plus tomorrow night, the Elimination Chamber, my live review immediately after the show, plus a post show for Patreon uh, exclusively. So thank you guys. I will talk to you all later. Peace out and have a good day. Goodbye.